Hi everybody, my name is Katie Ambriano and I'm the Digital Marketing Director of Horizon Group USA, a craft and toy company. Um, I've been with Horizon for seven years now and I oversee all things fun, creative, and content related um, from e-commerce to social media. So basically anything you see from us online, my team worked on it. Um, shout out to Digital Marketing, love you ladies. Um, and something I always just like to bring up is how I never thought it was possible to work at a craft and toy company. If you join me on Tuesday, you kind of already heard about this, but you can really be anything. And the only thing better than playing with toys is making them. Um, so today we are going to learn how to make fuzzy stick bubble wands, 3D bubbles, and bubble prints. Um, you can see I have a lot of the materials that you'll need laid out today. Um, something you'll need for every single one of these crafts is bubbles, of course. Um, so make sure you grab your bubbles um, and we can get started. Um, we're going to start with the fuzzy sticks uh, bubble wands. Um, I would definitely recommend if you have less fuzzy fuzzy sticks or pipe cleaner chenille stems, they're definitely the best ones to go with. Um, honestly, this is all you need and then your bubbles. Um, I like to embellish some of mine with beads, so you can use any kind of beads that you have. If you don't have any fuzzy sticks or pipe cleaners at home, an alternative is craft wire, but craft wire is not as kid friendly, so it will definitely need some adult supervision. And no worries, the beads are simply for embellishment, so you can absolutely make bubble wands without the beads. Um, you can really make whatever shape and size you want. Um, so you can see here, I have, you know, this is a bubble wand without, without any um, beads, and then I made a bunch of different designs. So I'm going to start and I can show you guys how to make a heart design. So if I go too fast for you guys, this uh, class will be posted on michaels.com slash kids club in within 24 hours. So feel free, you know, to take your time today and work at your own pace. You can always reference the class online at a later date. In addition to the bubble wands today, we're going to do um, bubble printing. And we're also going to do the 3D bubbles. So the 3D bubbles will use almost all the exact same materials. For your heart shape, I think the best way to get a nice curve on a fuzzy stick or a pipe cleaner is to kind of just pull it at an angle like this. If you can kind of see how I'm doing that. And if you put a lot of pressure on it, it gives it a really nice natural curve. It kind of reminds me of when you're trying to curl ribbons to make presents really pretty. Um, so you can continue to do your curve. And then that will be your two, you'll twist these two pieces, the ends, after you make your curve together to make a heart shape. Fuzzy sticks are honestly one of my favorite craft materials. I just think they're super awesome because you don't need glue. Um, once this feels secure for you, you can pull down and kind of create the bottom point of your heart. So you'll squeeze your two fuzzy stick edges together and then that will create your heart shape. If you twist, you'll secure your heart shape. So twist the bottom and there you have it. There is your heart bubble wand. Of course, what is a bubble wand without bubbles? So let me just grab my bubbles. Today I'm using scented bubbles because Scented bubbles are a little more fun, huh? But um, obviously feel free to use whatever kind of bubbles you want. I'm just gonna pour my bubbles out into this pan simply because my shape doesn't fit as good in 
the bottle. I don't want to squeeze my heart. So you guys can do the same, do whatever is convenient for you, depending on the vessel your bubbles are in. And I just want to show you how it works. So let me just open these bubbles. Did you know that bubbles are literally just a film of soap around air? And it's created by surface tension. I always thought that was super cool. And it always reminds me whenever I'm playing with bubbles, it just reminds me of that scene from Cinderella when she's cleaning and she shows up in all of the bubbles. So then you just dip your bubble wand and I'm not sure if you can see, but <laughs> I'm trying to blow a bubble, let's see. My wand is kind of failing, if I'm being honest, but hopefully on your end, you're having a better time. I don't know. Let's try another shape. Maybe a more round shape will be better. So let's give this a shot. Something you'll definitely want to have uh, nearby are paper towels or something to wipe your hands on because bubbles can get a little bit messy. So definitely be careful. Sometimes bubbles are better for an outdoor activity, which is why I'm kind of using this tin just to hold all my mess in. Um, so as you can see, I just very quickly put together a loop. It's not perfect, um, but all you have to do, I can show you, you can make a double sided bubble wand you'll take the end and the same way that I showed you how to make a curve earlier. So you're just going to put pressure on the, the fuzzy stick as you pull at it like that. And then you get a nice natural curve. So then you'll take your curved edge and give it a nice twist. Again, like fuzzy sticks are awesome because they're so mess free and you can really do whatever you want with them. You can turn them, twist them, make so many different uh, shapes. So let's give this round one a try. Maybe I need some more bubble solution here. Oops, wrong one. I have too many bubble containers around. Let's see. So you'll dip your bubble in its solution. And I can see that I'm getting the film. I'm not sure if you guys can see that on your end. Yeah, there you go. The coolest thing about bubbles too is they're, they reflect a bunch of colors, but they also reflect what's around them. So let's see if I can blow one. I don't know. It's just not working for me today, but I hope you guys are having better luck on your side. We'll keep creating some bubble, uh, some different bubble wand shapes. I'll show you guys how to easily make a star and then we'll add some beads to our bubble wands. So to make a star, you're gonna start just by doing about a one inch bend at the top of your bubble wand or at the top of your fuzzy stick, I should say. And then you're gonna go around. You can use that same, um, that same bend you did to measure and exactly make all of your other lines the same size. So just hold it against the other end of other side of your fuzzy stick and bend it in the opposite direction like that. And then you're going to repeat that, but bend it in the other opposite direction. So now you should have two triangles. These can be the base of your star. You're going to then repeat that here, bend it in the opposite direction. So you're basically bending your fuzzy stick into an accordion. And you'll keep doing that all the way around until you have five separate points of your fuzzy stick. I mean, of your star. I keep mixing up, mixing up my words today. So you see how I'm starting to form a star? You keep going around. Did you know that the reason bubbles are round is because the tension of a bubble, 
in bubble skin shrinks to the smallest possible shape for the volume of air it contains. And compared to any other shape, surface spheres have the smallest surface area. All right, so I'm finished with my triangles. And then once you get to the end and your last point, you're just going to twist those two ends together to secure. Once secured, you might have like a little bit of a funky shape going on, but that's okay. You can just remold it. And that's the other best part about fuzzy sticks is it will hold the shape you mold it to. So I got my funky star shape going on here. I'm just gonna kind of remold my lines. <laughs> it's not coming out as pretty as my other star. I feel like this happens, you know, when everybody's looking, it never looks as good. But I bet your stars are coming out perfect because you're all stars. Um, here we go. So we're going to call that done. And then you're just going to attach another fuzzy stick to the bottom, whatever colors you want. You can pick your favorite. I chose neon yellow because I thought it would stand out for you guys and you could really see what I'm doing. Um, but you can just wrap, you're going to just wrap the end, one end around a center point of your star to attach a wand to the bottom of your star. And you can wrap it around two or three times to secure. And once that's secured, you can start adding your beads. Um, playing with beads and fuzzy sticks is a great fine motor project, especially for younger kids who are still learning their fine motors or perfecting fine motor skills. Um, it's also pretty therapeutic. I mean, but also what's great about using fuzzy sticks with beads is they don't easily slide off. So it's a little less frustrating than when you're trying to craft with cording and your beads keep falling off. I'm a rainbow kind of gal, as you can see from my outfit today. So I'm definitely doing a rainbow pattern here on my bubble wand. And you can choose, you can use whatever kinds of beads you have, you want. I have translucent pony beads here. Um, you could use opaque, you could use flower shaped beads. You can see I have some of those here and you can definitely personalize your stuff by spelling things out with alphabet beads. Um, another great learning opportunity with alphabet beads is practicing spelling. And then once you are totally oops, happy with your bead design, I have a little bit ways to go, but I feel like it's looking kind of pretty now. It's really getting that rainbow appeal. And I'm gonna go a little bit further because the longer the stem of your bubble wand is, the less bubbles you're likely to get all over your hand. And like I said, you can really make any shape. Um, it just does seem like some shapes work a little bit better. Um, something else I found, like I said, is the less fuzzy it is, the better it seems to work. I would say if you do have the option to use craft wire and it's something you're comfortable with, Definitely do not do it without super adult supervision, but um, it honestly, like it does catch the bubbles a little bit better. Um, so when you're done, if you beaded like I did, you're gonna just wanna turn your, the end up to secure, and then you can kind of wrap it around that last bead. Um, if you guys missed how to make one of the shapes, you can check out the recording within the next 24 hours. It should be posted at michaels.com slash kids club. So once you're done with your beading, you're good to go and your wand is done. I'm just going to cut, use scissors, um, to cut. If you're not familiar with scissors, definitely ask an adult for help. 
and you'll just do a nice trim there and you're good to go. Here is your star-shaped bubble wand. Um, so today we've learned how to make a star, a heart, and a round bubble wand. You guys can definitely continue to explore any other shapes. Um, and to seal it, you just wrap it around here. I can do a close up of that. If you can see that, I just wrapped it around the second to last bead and folded it up so then it's secured. Um, if you want to even make it more secure, you can definitely use tape, glue, or a hot glue gun. Do not use a hot glue gun with adult, without adult supervision. You could really, really hurt yourself. Um, but I would recommend that with fuzzy sticks because it definitely holds on better. So now that we've created our own bubble wands, the next activity we're going to do actually involves fuzzy sticks as well. So keep those pipe cleaners, fuzzy sticks, chenille stumps, whatever you refer to them as handy. Um, I'm just going to clean up my area a little bit. I like to clean as I go because um, a clean space is a happy space. So let me tell you that much. The next activity we're going to do is 3D bubbles. So for this activity, you're going to need bubbles or dish soap and water. Honestly, for this activity, dish soap and water work just as well. Um, you may want to cover your, your area. So I'm just going to have my tin here ready. A cookie sheet is a great alternative to a disposable tin. Even a cake pan, really any kind of pan um, is great because it's waterproof and you don't have to worry about the things spilling over. So you're going to just need your fuzzy sticks for this. Um, I'm just going to, there we go, see here a little bit closer. Um, you'll need some straws. And then you're going to need your soapy water or your bubbles. So I actually did a little bit of a mixture. There's no um, exact science to this. I just poured a little bit of bubble mix in, um, a squirt of dish soap and water. Um, so really any of that will work. And honestly, you can just have that set aside because we don't need that until after we build our bubble structures. So we're going to be creating 3D bubbles, which are going to show us the, um, sorry, um, they're going to teach us all about tensile structures. So a tensile structure is formed when a material or cable is stretched and held in tension between two or more anchors. So basically, I'll show you what a finished 3D bubble structure looks like, a tensile structure. It's, these are your two points, but this one obviously has a lot more. So when I dip this in the water, you can see how the 3D bubble is formed. If it was a little clearer, you would better see, but you can see the point in the middle that's created. So I'm going to show you guys how to make these. We'll start with the pyramid. So make sure you also have your scissors nearby. You'll need them to cut your straws. So let's cut our straws first. Fold your straw in half to find the middle. Not perfect. Okay, if you're not perfect, honestly, nothing's perfect, right? And you give a nice cut here. And go all the way through. And then you're going to fold each half in half again. So you're going to get four pieces about from each bubble. I mean, from each straw. For the pyramid, you're going to need, I think, one, two, three, four. You're going to need one and a half straws for the pyramid. And yes, the recording from for this class will be up in 24 hours. Um, 
Um, and one and a half to two straws for the pyramid should be good. If you cut them perfectly into four pieces each, two straws will be plenty. So give that a nice cut here. We're gonna do the same thing here. It's okay to use the bendy part of the straw. If you don't have bendy straws, that's fine too. Um, unfortunately for this craft, if you don't have these materials, I don't have a bunch of alternatives for you. Um, but these are basic craft supplies and a household item that you can get at Michaels, michaels.com. Um, and in this case, the fuzziness of your fuzzy sticks don't, um, don't really affect your outcome. So after we cut four pieces, we're gonna cut one more straw. We're gonna need six pieces total. So cut it in half. And then cut it a half again. Um, I can put the star on camera for you to use as a reference, but if you want to see how to make the bubble wands, again, definitely check out the video recording that will be on michaels.com slash kids club. Um, our moderator will certainly post the link in here for you guys at the end of the class. Um, and then you're going to cut it in half again. Oops. Straw's gone crazy. That's okay. So now we're going to start building our, our pyramid. So once all your pieces are cut, like you said, for the pyramid, you're going to need six separate pieces of straw. And you'll just string three of those pieces through a fuzzy stick, whatever color you want could match your straw. Maybe it will be its complementary color like this green and red. Um, and you'll string on three of these. Once you have three on, you're actually going to bend. See this middle straw here? I'm going to bend right there. So you want a shape like this. And then you're going to take the fuzzy stick on the right and twist it at this point once it's overlapped with the left fuzzy stick. So do a twist. And then we're going to string on two more straws. Like that. And I'm going to need one more fuzzy stick. It kind of depends where you go on your end. Um, you can definitely do this with one, but to, in case you fold the way I did and you kind of run out of space on your first fuzzy stick, it's as simple as twisting a second one to your first one. So just overlap them like this and give them a good twist probably two, three, or four times around to just make sure it's secure. Once your fuzzy sticks are connected, you'll just take your another piece of straw and string it onto that fuzzy stick. So now it's one, two, three, one, two, three. Oh, you know what, guys? Did I mess up here? <laughs> I did. Actually, though, we can fix it. So next, what you're going to do, you have your straws like this, and you're just going to connect it to this corner and wrap your fuzzy stick around the corner to secure them together. Um, where I went wrong 
was by adding a, um, a straw on this other end. So right now you're gonna wanna be here. This straw doesn't need to be here. I apologize for confusing you guys. Um, if you can just get this shape down, you'll be in a good spot. And I'm gonna do one more shape after this. Additionally, if you're finding it difficult to follow along, there will be a recording available on michaels.com slash kids club tomorrow. Okay. So we have this shape. And then on our long fuzzy stick, we're going to add one more piece of straw. So once you get to this shape, you're in a good spot. going to have to thread because basically we want you want to end up like this I really sorry guys I'm going to start over with this pyramid because I honestly confused myself I apologize for this confusion um, starting fresh I'll go a little more quickly here you're gonna cut eight pieces of straws. So you need two straws. You're going to cut them both in half. And then you're going to cut them in half again. So at the end, you should have eight pieces of straw that are all about the same length. You're gonna take a pipe cleaner and you're gonna thread through three straws. One, two, three. Once these are threaded on, the easier way to do this is to make sure you're only keeping about an inch to a half an inch at the end. Pull up like this, create a triangle shape and then twist your two fuzzy stick ends together here to secure it. So then you're gonna add two more fuzzy sticks or two more, sorry, two more straws onto this long piece of your fuzzy stick. One, two. To create the second triangle shape, you're going to wrap it back around to the opposite corner. And this is where you're going to twist to secure. Then, so once you get to this shape, you'll probably run, have run out of fuzzy sticks. You'll take one more fuzzy stick and you're gonna attach it to this point on the right hand side. So you have a diamond shaped here and you'll take this fuzzy stick, wrap it around, like I said, three to four times just to make sure that it's secure. Then you're gonna add one more straw section to your fuzzy stick. And you're gonna bend it back to the other corner 
the opposite corner of the diamond and wrap it around. This was a much more successful path to a pyramid. So thank you guys for bearing with me and for your patience. I think I just messed myself up when I had to add the new fuzzy stick. Um, before you dip it, just to keep your hands dry, I would definitely recommend just looping your fuzzy stick around and wrapping here, just to give yourself a little bit of a handle to secure. Again, you could twist it around probably three to five times. Once your handle is secured and your pyramid is done, you can dip it in your soapy water or soapy solution. I'm gonna give it a nice stir here. And there you have it, your three-dimensional bubble wand. So like I said, these are tensile bubbles because we're demonstrating how tensile structures carry the tension with no compression or bending to form a point in the middle. Who knew, who knew bubbles that could teach you so many fun lessons? So next I'm gonna show you guys how to make one more shape and then we're gonna get into bubble printing. When I blow on my bubble, it kind of just pops because I did a mixture of dish soap and water and bubble solution. Um, but it's more to demonstrate the three-dimensional bubbles. The next shape I'm going to show you guys how to make is a cube. It's relatively similar. Um, for this one, you're going to need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You're going to need three straws for this one. So you may have two pieces left over from your other straws. So there you go. And then you'll need two more and a half straws. So you'll cut them in half, cut your straws in half, and then cut the halves in half again. Collect your straws if they're running away from you like mine are. And then cut your other half in half one more time. So now that all of your bubbles, or all of your straws are cut, you are ready to grab your fuzzy sticks to get started on your cubes. So you'll string through. This time, you're gonna start with four straws. To secure your straw too, if you find that you're struggling to keep them strong, you can kind of just fold up the end of your fuzzy stick and it will keep it secure for you while you string on the others. Oh, it looks like my camera got swapped. Here we go. All right, so you'll just string these on all four. One, two, three, four. And then you're going to fold each joint up where the straws meet. So you don't need any space between your straws. You're just gonna fold it exactly where they meet to figure out a square shape or to create a square shape, I should say. So once you do that, you can twist the fuzzy stick, the other end, 
together to secure. So you're gonna have one sheet like this. And then I'm definitely gonna run out of space on this next fuzzy, on this fuzzy stick. So I'm going to add on a second one by twisting the two ends together. So we'll twist them. Did you know that a bubble, the reason it has so many colors is because of the light waves reflecting between the soap film's outer and inner surfaces. So it's basically a reflection, reflection of itself. Next, once you have your second fuzzy stick, if you ran under space like I did, once you have it attached, you're going to then string on more and more straws straw pieces, I should say. Let's move this guy here. One, two, three. So once you have three more straws strung on, you're then going to wrap back around to the other corner and you're going to have two squares facing each other. So here you're just going to want to secure your fuzzy sticks together by turn, twisting it around probably three to four times to secure. So now you guys should have something that looks a little bit like this. It's okay if it's not perfect. Um, and if you're spaced out a little bit more, that's fine too. It won't mess you up in any way. So now we have half of our cube built. we are going to probably need to add another fuzzy stick. So I would definitely grab another pipe cleaner fuzzy stick while you're at it, but you can string on two more straws to whatever you have left. One, two. And if I'm going too fast or you feel like you need to go at your own pace, definitely check out the class tomorrow. It will be posted online. And then now I need to add my second fuzzy stick because I'm running out of space to loop back around. So twist the extra fuzzy, the little end you have left and a new fuzzy stick together to secure. And then you're gonna loop around. Through the top of the square. So A star shape will not give you star bubbles because once the bubble leaves its shape, it organically becomes the smallest surface shape that it possibly can be around the air that's filled it. And as I had said earlier, spheres have the smallest surface area for volume, which is why bubbles turn back into spheres after they are released from a, a shaped wand. Oh wait, did I, I'm sorry guys. You add on two more and then string around. I don't know why I keep getting twist turned upside down when I'm making these shapes. Your last, you'll actually need one more um, straw before you loop back around. So that's my apologies. And you're gonna go through here I think I used an extra straw, but that's all right. Because the next pieces we need, we just need to do this piece, this piece, and this piece. So you're gonna string on two more straws. One, 
to, once you've strung on those two straws, you'll take your fuzzy stick and you can bend it. So you create another square, another side to your cube, and you'll actually slide back through to connect all of your sides together. So like I said, I used an extra straw and directed you guys to as well, but you should have the same results, no problem. We're gonna just need one more fuzzy stick to finish off. Um, a half of a fuzzy stick should do the trick. So I'm actually gonna cut it in half. To be honest, I'm not surprised I'm struggling with this because geometry, math, and anything that's not super creative isn't really my jam. But you know what, we're making it through together. And as long as you guys get cool 3D bubble wands at the end of the day, I feel like I did my job. So you're gonna just string one more straw onto your um, fuzzy stick, one more straw piece, and then you can bend at the straw pieces and just insert in each fuzzy stick into the straw sides and then just bend up to secure and repeat on the other side. Um, the one thing that this needs to be finished off is a handle. So you can just take a fuzzy stick and attach it. I like to attach it diagon diagonally um, and I'm gonna attach it to the more secure sides. So you can just loop it around and twist one corner and then diagonally do it to the same uh, to the other side and twist around and loop around and there you go there is your crazy bubble cube um, once your cube is done you can do the same exact exercise put it in your bubbly water and there you go you have a cube made out of bubbles. So once you guys are done with that, we are gonna move on to our last activity. Definitely the most colorful for today. I'm just gonna set aside all of these things because I no longer need them. For this activity, you're gonna need paper, some kind of liquid watercolor or food coloring, um, you can use washable paint, but I feel like you just don't get as vibrant of results. It's not as successful. Um, basically, if you have any kind of liquid dye, it should really do the job um, and it should give you the vibrancy that you'll be looking for. So this is an example of the bubble prints that I'm going to show you how to create today. I want to let you know that there are hundreds of ways, honestly, for you to do this activity. Um, but due to my lack of space and the fact that I wanted to keep everything relatively clean, I am only, um, I'm showing you this way within jars. So you're going to want a few different size containers. I'm using mason jars. Plastic cups should work just fine. Um, and I would also recommend that if you're using something like food dye to get yourself a pair of gloves or something to protect your hands, just because food dye does stain, um, if you're using washable paint, you should have no issues. And this is a little bit more of a complicated, I mean, I don't want to call it complicated, but it's a little bit more involved. So if you feel like you need to go at your own pace or you have a lot of questions or you think I'm going too fast, Definitely refer to our recording tomorrow on michaels.com slash kids club. So I'll show you guys how I create the solution to start. So I have a few that are done that I'll plop into here. Um, also for your paper, I would recommend a thicker stock paper if you have it available. Um, otherwise, it will curl up similar to the way my example did. I used regular construction paper for this, um, but today for my demonstration, I'm going to show you guys with watercolor paper, which is a much thicker stock paper. It shouldn't um, curl up at all when it dries, but be sure to let your creation dry for a few hours um, before you move it or touch it. 
So let's begin. Um, in this jar, I just have a little bit of water and then I'm going to add my bubble solution. The more solution you add, the more bubbly it will be. Um, and that's the same goes for your, your dye. So I'm using food dye today. Um, that's what's in these jars. It's what's made them really vibrant. I honestly did only one or two drops of food dye in each of these and it's truly so bright and beautiful. Um, that's why I strongly recommend using some kind of liquid dye um, because honestly, like the results, it's a game changer, let me tell you guys. Um, and this artwork is so vibrant, it matches my shirt, my tie dye, I wore it as a theme. Um, so you can do, like I said, as many or as little drops as you want. I'm going to do just three drops. Um, and then you're also going to need your straws again. So hopefully you have some extra straws and I didn't make you use too many in our previous activity. So you're just going to give this a stir. And I'm pretty happy with that color, but it's a little more watered down than I want it to be. So I'm going to add a few more droplets because I want this to be super, super vibrant. So it's really easy for you guys to see on camera. Adding that. And I'm going to give it a stir. You can see I also have a few different size jars. It doesn't really matter what size jar you use, but I kind of just wanted an assortment to have fun with. Um, so I'm going to place my solution in here. Um, I also have nearby a second tin. Right now it's full of bubble solution, so let me just empty that out. Um, and I also have a few other colors on standby, but I'm looking to need something that's really summertime uh, to close out the summer. You know, I can't believe how much time has gone by already and that school is starting, and that August is coming to an end. Um, so now that my workspace is ready, um, it's just easier to have a few uh, tins nearby um, or one large tin, whatever you're more comfortable with, because um, it just helps to contain your mess. That's it. Um, and having some paper towels and whatnot nearby, just in case there are any spills. Um, so I'm gonna put on my gloves now. I would recommend doing the same if you guys are following along. Um, I feel like everybody has gloves right now, so maybe this is a, a great activity for now. Um, I'm putting these on. Then here's the fun part. So you're gonna blow into your straws. Be sure not to suck up. Be very, very careful and ask an adult for help if you need some assistance. But it's kind of like when you bubble your milk, even if you're not supposed to at the table. So we're gonna do that. Um, I'll start with the blue. You kind of want it to get to a point where it really does get very high to the top. Now that my bubbles have reached the very tippy top, um, you can actually start printing this way if you'd like, so I'll show you how to do that. You simply take your piece of paper and you place it on top of the bubbles and you pop them. And this one didn't come out as good as the other colors, so let's try a different color. Um, but you can see there's a little bit of blue there, so maybe I just need to add a little bit more dye. So I made a lot of bubbles, and then I'm going to pop them. There you go. So you can kind of see the yellow there. And I like to just wait. The longer the bubbles sit, the more dye falls to the bottom, so the deeper color will be there. Um, the reason I like this technique is it doesn't get your paper soaking wet. If your paper gets really wet, all of the dye kind of just soaks together. So I just tried to catch a few more bubbles there. And you can see that the print is kind of starting. Um, so let me do one more color. I'm going to blow into, you can do the pink. And this is the reason you can see the little mess that's being created. I'm just going to blow in here.
This pink is gonna look so pretty and I'm just gonna pop these bubbles with my paper. Oh, look at that. So the longer you let those bubbles sit, the longer the dye has to drip to the bottom and it will create more defined bubble patterns. If you're not loving the, you know, proximity here and you want to make something or you're trying to get a little more messy, which you can do. I'm actually going to remove the other colors and I'll just stick with the pink because it's certainly the most vibrant of everything that I've shown you today. And you can just blow and you can let it overflow into your container. Um, it is water, um, a little bit of bubble solution and food coloring. You can also use um, liquid watercolors. I, like I said earlier, any liquid dye should work just fine. So I went a little crazy and you can let them overflow into your container and you can keep doing this to build a whole structure of bubbles. Um, and there's no exact science to your proportion. The more bubble solution you use, the bubblier your solution will be and vice versa. I would definitely say you probably want more soap than water. Um, so I really love how this is looking here. So I'm going to place my paper on top and I flattened it. See the thing that I'm, I don't love as much with this technique is it doesn't give you as much control of where you wanna place your colors um, and it gets your paper a little more wet so it causes a bleed between your colors. But if you're looking, you know, just to make a ton of bubbles, it, but that's a great way to do it. Um, so that is how you create a bubble print. Um, you can do whatever colors you want. Um, it's a really fun summertime activity. And I would definitely recommend, I mean, if you can do it outside, do it outside. You can do it on a large scale. And then once you create your prints, finish creating your prints and let them dry overnight, you can create cards or cut out hearts. You can create wall art. You can really make whatever you want with them. Um, I think we're just about out of time. Does anybody have any questions before I let you go for the day? All right. Um, it looks like you guys are silent, so I don't hate it. That means like hopefully you had a great time today. Um, and definitely share your creations with us with the hashtag make it with, with Michaels. Um, tag Horizon Group USA. We'd love to see what you made. Um, we'd love to see your bubble art. We'd love to see your, your fuzzy stick creations. And also check out craftprojectideas.com for more inspiration. Thank you guys. Have a great day.